my name is Vidhi Kalra and welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. Well firstly a very Merry Christmas since this video goes live on 25th of December and I hope the Santa Claus fulfills all your wishes and gives you lots of gifts. So yeah coming back to your video the topic for today is supply and determinants of supply which is a topic which is studied at the school level. You know, we start off with supply right after demand and also at the undergrad level in the first and second semester because supply and demand basically are the crux or the backbone of economics. So I had already done a series on demand, multiple videos I had done. You can check it out on my channel. I thought something was missing and that was supply. So I thought to start a new series of the supply videos. Well, the first video of the series is supply and determinants of supply. That is the factors which affect the supply. And if you study demand, I think it will be easier for you to do supply. And even if you haven't, well, I'll be at your rescue. So yeah, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Also, guys, don't forget to like this video and do subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already so that I can hit 50k subscribers super soon. And also follow me on my Instagram handle, which is also called 5 Minute Economics. Firstly, guys, let me explain to you what actually is supply. Well, supply refers to the quantity of a commodity which producers, remember producers or sellers, not consumers, are willing to produce an offer for sale at a particular price during a particular period of time. So basically, this is what supply is. Whenever when we, you know, this is actually the definition. Whenever we study supply, we have to see the producer point of view, what the producer is willing to sell at what price and at what period of time that is basically supply. Three key features of supply which you have to keep in mind are number one, it is the desired quantity which the sellers are willing to sell, not what they actually sell. So remember that. Secondly, guys, supply is always expressed with reference to price. Without the price being in picture, it is of no use. You know, uh, we will study ahead that price, of course, plays a lot of role in the supply. When the price will change, the supply also changes. So definitely it is cast at a price. And thirdly and most importantly, supply, just like demand, is a flow variable. That is, it is um, uh, not a stock concept. Basically, it is measured over a period of time. Supply for a month, supply for a week, supply for a month, you know, year, not supply at a particular point of time. Otherwise, it would have been a stock variable, anything which is measured at a point of time. But supply is measured over a period of time. It is a flow concept. So hope you are clear with this. Moving ahead to the determinants of supply. That is, what is determinants basically, guys? The factors which determine supply. Okay, number one factor being the most important, just like demand here, also price plays a crucial role in determining the supply. But in this scenario, guys, if you know demand, whatever the price rises, as a consumer, if the price of something is rising, we will tend to demand it less because it's becoming expensive, right? That's what we studied. Now, keep that aside in your head. Coming to supply, guys, when the supply, when the, sorry, price rises, the supply rises. Here, they show a direct or positive relationship with price. Why, guys? Because the reason is now the producer. Now, you're thinking from the producer point of view. It is more profitable for him to sell something which is priced high, which is less price. What profit we will get in that? So, the supply will rise. Okay, I hope you're clear. Secondly, price of related good. Now, what is related good can be like, substitute or complementary good here we are saying we're just saying related good in general when the price of the related good rises the supply of the commodity in question falls why because now it is uh, more profitable for the producer to sell the commodity which is more highly priced so the price of related good is rising so its supply will rise whereas the commodity in question will fall and vice versa will happen when the price of the related good false now guys moving ahead to our other two determinants number one being goals of the firm now as a firm everyone doesn't have the same goal every firm differs right and you in your own family must have seen that you know um when you go to buy some things they, they even tend to sell it at a lower price when you maybe buy a phone but they tend to maximize their sales because their goal is different so here there are three types of goals you know profit maximization sales minim maximization and risk minimization. In case the firm's aim is profit maximization, yani ki zada si zada munafa. In that case, guys, he will only supply at a higher price and not supply at a um, you know lower price, okay, or supply less at a lower price. Whereas if the firm is aiming to maximize the sales, then he will be willing to supply even at a lower price in order to maximize his sales. 
In that case, it is a different scenario from the previous one. Thirdly, if the game is risk minimization, and he's playing safe in the market, in this case, he will supply less because he wants to be safe in the market and not uh, invite any troubles for himself. So these are the three goals and on which the supply depends. Next, coming to technology or of the firm. Okay, so if your firm is using very highly sophisticated technology, you know, like the most latest technology, up-to-date technology, of course, you are um, producing in bulk at a uh, in a shorter time span because you are using very hi-fi technology. In that case, of course, bulk production will lead to increase in profit, which definitely, when increase in profit, we would want to supply more. Whereas in the second scenario, if you're using outdated, obsolete uh, technology, in that case, guys, our supply will fall because supply is taking more time and which obviously raises the cost of production. So we don't want to produce more at that point of time. Other determinants of supply, guys, price of inputs. Price of inputs definitely play an important role in determining the supply. Why? Because if the price of the inputs or raw materials, they tend to fall. Definitely, it is now cheaper to produce, right? So, obviously, our cost of production falls. In that case, now a profit has risen and a profit has risen. So, who doesn't want to supply more? So, this is what it happens when price of inputs fall, whereas vice versa conditions prevail when price of inputs rise. Next, guys, natural factors. Now, natural factors are favorable or unfavorable. Favorable natural factors may be like a good uh, rain, uh, definitely fa uh, favorable. Um, you know, natural factors, they depend a lot uh on the agricultural production because agricultural production happens because of air wind or whatever you know water sunshine so many things what if there's a flood or there's a famine or anything like that in that case the uh, production goes haywire so definitely if natural factors are favorable agricultural production goes up which of course increases supply of raw materials and we know what happens then supply of raw materials increases to industry so supply of uh, the commodities also tends to increase whereas vice versa when conditions are unfavorable Lastly, guys, government policy. Now, what is government policy? Government can impose taxes or government can put subsidies, right? When government puts taxes, guys, the cost of production will rise. Definitely for the producer, it is expensive. When the cost of production rises, the profit margin falls. And of course, when there is less of profit, why, why I would like to supply more? My supply falls. Whereas when government gives subsidies or any kinds of benefits, in that case, our cost of production falls, our profit margin rises and our supply rises remember this chain guys if you remember this change you know cost of production profit supply it is very easy definitely not saying because i've studied it fast like for so many times so many years but it is much more easier than demand i feel even when i had studied it for the very first time get to means of transport and communication when means of transport are easily available at affordable rates then definitely supply will rise whereas otherwise supply will fall Next, guys, nature of commodity. Now, commodity can be produced from a monopolist firm or a competitive firm, right? If a monopoly, you know, monopoly of good is being produced, definitely would like to restrict the output so as to raise the market price. In doing that, he will tend to supply less. Whereas in the case of a competitive, a perfectly competitive or maybe you know, monopoly, monopolistic competitive market, there is no tendency to restrict the output because there's a lot of competition already. In that case, they will produce and supply more than the monopolized industry. So lastly, coming to the last two determinants of supply, which are expectations regarding future prices. So what happens, guys, if the producer somehow comes to know that there is a chance that in the future the price will rise, then he will tend to supply less today. He will tend to hold it. Why? Because it will be beneficial for him to supply in future when the price is more, right? Whereas to offer a larger quantity in future. Whereas in case he expects the prices to fall, he will tend to supply at a higher price in the present moment today. Next or the last point I can say agreement among producers. Well, producers, I would say sometimes act very mischievous. They tend to form a pool and enter into an agreement so as to create artificial scarcity to earn large profits. And anything which has scarcity, of course, when the, the price will rise, then that in that case. So they will tend to create an artificial sub, uh, scarcity and consequently in that scenario, the supply will fall. So that's all about this particular video, guys. And this is the last video of 2022. Thank you so much for showing so much love on 5-Minute Economics. Always grateful for your love. And thank you for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video uh, next year, which will be pretty soon.